In this video, we're going to focus on building one hero block uh, on the back of a design that was, let's say, handled to us uh, by a designer in, uh, in a Figma file. Right. So let me show you the Figma file that I'm going to be using. So <clears throat> this is this is the hero block we want to build right so we've got you can see this hover on uh, on the background image so we got a background image that we need to download and then we have a subtitle that has this orange border around it uh, we have a page title um, some text and then a primary and a secondary call to action and this one has an icon so the point of today's exercise is uh, to build this page all right um, to get started uh, i'm gonna first download the background image uh, and for that i'm gonna use an svg all right now i've got my background image uh, I have I don't need any other assets basically of this page All right so in the page builder uh, we'll start off with an empty grid inside a block now typically for the hero sections of a website you um, want to make sure they're pretty they have a larger height right you can see here uh, that there's a quite a lot of white space on the top and the bottom uh, so we want to use that um, and we're going to kind of want to replicate that same design in our page builder so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the height uh, to 1000 pixels right or 1100 there you go so this is my block it's pretty big right but it's my block uh, that has that background image. Uh, so under the background, so I want to set the background image uh, that I just downloaded to my block. And uh, let's just get that image. Let's upload it to the file manager. So we have the background image here. I'm just going to select it. And uh, you can see that subtle background is there. But I just want to make sure that it's positioned correctly, bottom center or top. Yeah, bottom center is the preferred option here and we can also play with some of these other options but for example we don't want tile uh, i think this one's the best uh, and it's correctly positioned so we got that background sorted now it's time uh, to have a container for all these uh, uh, for all this text right so for that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a grid and uh, the grid is already there as when we enter, insert uh, a new block, the grid is always there. So what I'm gonna do with this grid is I'm gonna uh, set, well, the height is 100%, but I wanna make sure it's a fixed grid. Um, we'll just set it to roughly 500 pixels for now and we'll adjust that uh, later as we go through the exercise right. um, now the grid is on the top but as you can see here the content is centered on the page so let's center that grid uh, by selecting the block and setting the vertical line to center and now we have that grid in the place where we want it and uh, what you can see also is that we got the first row containing uh, this tag, second row containing the title, third row containing the text, and fourth row containing the call to actions. So let's uh, make sure we have that same grid layout here. Um, so we got four rows that we that we need. All right, that's done. Uh, and now uh, what we can do is start adding that content. Um, so first let's add a heading and check out the team dashboard that's what we want right uh, it's pretty big here um, so what we're gonna do is make it a bit smaller and use let's say h6 as a typography and we want to make sure it's centered right 
Now, if you see here, we got some borders, we got some orange text, right? So the text is orange. Let's make sure we've got that covered, all right? And now that we have that covered, let's add some background to the text, which is going to be we can copy paste the design from Figma to better match it. So we got this one. It's this one, but with 10%. So to make it a bit easier, we'll just use a general color picker. I've got my color now. I can go back to the page builder and get the right color there. So go that's our text but you can see that it's actually pretty wide right uh, now to control the width uh, we actually need to have a nested grid here because the fixed width can be added to the grid but can't be added to the heading so now I've nested a grid inside that cell I'm just gonna move this one into the into it so we have that main grid and then we have our cell, and then we have inside of that an inner grid. Uh, with that, actually, let's remove the background color from there, and we can apply the uh, background color to the grid instead. So just let's do that. Okay, so we got that. Um, but the point why we did this in a grid is that I can now adjust this tag, right? Um, so it's roughly that. And I want to put this in the center, all right? What else we have there is it's got like these rounded borders, right? So. Um, Let's do the rounded borders. Mm -hmm. So we now have our rounded borders. Um, still a bit bigger than what we have there on the screen, uh, and it's probably due to the sum of the built-in paddings and margins uh, that come with the grid. So you can just work on adjusting that slightly to uh, meet that same visual appeal here. Um, so that I wanted to just make sure it's typed the same way. Let's also readjust the width a bit. I think the font size needs to be adjusted and it's bold, right? I would add still maybe just a few more. There you go. So this is looking much closer to what we have here. All right, now it's time for this uh, heading. Um, and for that, we just move to the second cell. Let's add a heading. Let's paste the text, and this text was marked as orange, and it had, after landing, a new line, and it was central aligned. All right, so let's say that that is pretty good. And then we have this paragraph, which we can add here. Similarly, let's align it to the center, and we got two paragraph styles to choose from, so let's just keep it at that one. Uh, but it, you can see here, it's smaller uh, in size. So what we can do is just make the outer, outer grid smaller, as it's probably like this. All right. Cool. Um, finally, 
we've got the two call to actions get started and learn more learn more has got an icon uh, so for that we need to add another grid here because we need to have two cells all right and in the left cell we have the primary call to action which is get started and here we have a simple one which is uh, i think learn more yes learn more then it's got a, an icon all right let's try to find a matching icon there we go so we want to place the icon on the right hand side and it's probably much smaller probably around like this all right um they are both kind of aligned to the center of the of the grid so let's just align that um, the same way all right so this is much better now you can see here that the visual style here is slightly different than what i have here uh, the way that buttons work uh, they're closely linked to your theme uh, which is uh, controlled through code um, so here under the type you see my theme only exposes a couple of button options um, so i don't have that same uh, button option as in that figma file to do that like my developers would edit the theme and ensure that that button is part of our design standard uh, because you don't want people to be able to add different types of buttons just for the sake of it. It has to be strictly controlled through the design system. So in this case, I won't be bothered with that. For now, I'm happy with uh, with how this, uh, this looks like. All right, we're close uh, to the very end of this. Now, uh, we've got decent uh, white space in between these elements but let's see if we can just slightly adjust all of that first of all I want to get that outer grid uh, and let's see you know, what's gonna happen here I think we need to readjust the height a bit to make it a bit smaller uh, all right so there we go and I think I still want the width to be slightly smaller so this breaks into uh, after the keeps pages um, section. So let's do width maybe 650, 550. All right, cool. So we now have that. Uh, and if we go on the preview, this is how it's going to look like on our website. So we got that nice background. You can see this being added on the top and the bottom. This is part of our layout that I mentioned. So if I don't want this, I can create myself a layout uh, that doesn't have a header and a footer as part of my theme. But for now, we're just focusing on the actual content, uh, which is matching what we have in our Figma file. But the last thing we do want to check is how it looks on the mobile it's not very nice uh, you can see too much white space here everything's kind of bundled too close together so let's just fix the mobile uh, a bit um, all right first of all let's start with the block um, the block i don't want the height to be in pixels here i just want it to be 100 percent uh, of my viewport height all right so this is going to match the the height of the the mobile device if you want to just be a bit kind of stricter because uh, some viewports of some mobile devices are longer some are shorter we can still define a fixed uh a fixed height and let's say for this case i want something that is uh 700 600 pixels let's try that so this way if uh 
device is shorter i'm just going to have a bit more scrolling but the visual aspect of the uh, of the block is going to still remain regardless if the device is taller or shorter because i have now a fixed width a fixed height for that element all right so that's one thing the other thing that we want to do is make sure these things are aligned to the center uh, so they are much nicer and what else we want to do is just add a bit more white space between uh, these elements here. And what we can do is just add a bit of a margin uh, here, let's say 20 pixels on top, 20 pixels on bottom, and we want to add here just the bottom 20 pixels. Right, um, so that's that. And it's looking much better, right? Um, so you can see here we've got our desktop preview tablets looking good we can adjust the mobile landscape a bit more if we wanted to right so uh, let's just make sure these ones are again sorted and um, twenty pixels uh, I don't want here any I want to have zero, zero on the sides, and yeah, I just want the bot bottom uh, twenty pixels. I can actually make the grid a bit smaller here, um, maybe four fifty, just so I get more uh, white space on the sides. And again, I want to make sure that the block height is. Uh, in pixels here, maybe set to 600 or even smaller, 400, 500. There you go. There you go. So, got our desktop, got our desktop, got our tablet, mobile, landscape, and standard mobile. All right? Looking pretty good. Uh, so, with that, we're going to end our tutorial. And I hope you kind of got uh, a better sense of uh, how does the page builder editor work in, in practice when you need to tweak little details, kind of make maybe sometimes a step forward, but then go a step backwards because you saw, oh, I'm not going to be able to achieve what I wanted. So it's kind of like a, uh, it, it's, sometimes you just need to bit experiment. Can I achieve what I want to by kind of... Uh, getting this grid inside this grid or can I do it without and things like that. So, but I hope it was useful uh, and that it was a step that uh, built upon uh, some of the previous videos. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.